Greetings from Denver, Colorado. This is Greg Aiden with Aiden Leadership, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Servant Leadership Podcast. Uh, Thomas Ramsey, we have you coming to us live from Florida, correct? This is correct, Greg. Greetings Welcome. from Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach, and in Atlanta, Georgia, is that right? We find Honey Burger. How are you today, Honey? I am doing wonderful, and yes, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Great. Well, I have worked with both of you uh, in certain phases of my life. Back in, a, in the IHG days, uh, Hani and I were working together. Uh, and then recently, I was working with Works, a company that now employs Thomas Ramsey. So I, I understand from which you, where you came. And, but what we really want to find out today is, who are you? Where'd you come from? But more importantly, why do you do what you do? And, and Hani, I'm going to start with you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and focus on the why. Yeah, sure. Probably the longer I talk, you will realize that I'm not originally from Georgia. I'm <laughs> really good at saying y'all, but uh, yeah. no, I'm originally from Austria. Nice. And uh, I've been in the States for about 21 years now. It, it's interesting. I've worked actually for, you know, as you were just referencing IHG, I've worked for the company for 20 years uh, mm -hmm. and probably would have, been, would have been with them for the rest of my life if my personal story would have not uh, led me to what I do today and to your question as to why do I do what I do today. It, at a basic point, I, I got divorced 12 years ago and uh, quite frankly, I really put myself in a hole for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I wallowed in my pain like no other. Um, I thought life would be coming to an end. Uh, at the same time, stress was in the office as an all -time, at an all-time high. I just got the sure. new promotion. So it took about, as I said, two and a half years for me to come out of it. And when I did, I decided to go straight to the other end of the extreme. So I went from depressive eating, chocolate eating, um, and really not leaving the house to working out ridiculously hard six, seven days a week. I counted every calorie I put in my mouth uh, in, wow. a, in an effort to be perfect. And I think a lot of people just, you know, yo-yo back and forth between completely gluttony and then you know this attempt to just be perfect in all of our ways and I realized that didn't work out so over mm. time um, I finally met a health coach a health coach who was trained and experienced to help me find my path the beautiful thing with health coaching really is that it's not a preset program or a mm -hmm. certain diet that you follow and through the support of that person I um, I learned what really healthy looks like for me and it, quite frankly it was then the impetus of me leaving a beautiful corporate role and for me to start my own company and so today i have two passions i have the passion of running a company called joyville uh, joyville is a network of professional health coaches we most often work with very busy executives to help them become uh, the healthiest most joyful and fulfilled selves um, we really offer them a one-stop solution to find a vetted health coach and to have a customized experience that is tailor-made to their needs. So that is one side of my passion. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, just over the experience that I've had over those many years. I've, I've lived under stress and anxiety for so many years. And today I actually finally figured out like I've, I've, I've spelled out my purpose and my purpose says to boldly strive for peace and joy. Mm -hmm. And I get the tension, bold and striving is like this, right. and peace and joy is like, ah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but it's become my mission to figure out what it truly takes to be at peace, to really experience joy in all aspects of my life. And until I've absolutely found that resume, I will be boldly striving. And so that's really yeah. where my passion is today through both YouTube videos, a channel with about 160 videos where I share all of my learnings and through sharing it through speaking engagements um, that I'm so excited to be part of at your event coming up in February. Well, I want to ask you one thing. Uh, you, you, you gave someone, a, you gave someone a, a lot of credit. You, met, you said you met a health coach. Can we give that human being a name? Oh, yes, absolutely. Lisa Engel. Um, Lisa is uh, also part of the Joyville Health Coach team today. Mm. Um, she's, she's just phenomenal, um, a gift to the world. Well, there's, there's gifts all over the place, and I know you're, you're giving a lot of gifts as we speak. 
But I just want to recognize Lisa because at some point you were at a Y or a T in your life and you, somehow she came into your world. And, and I just, it's nice to recognize the people that really push us to, the, to the, that edge to say, it's time, time to do something different. So you and Jovial are, are here. We're, we're glad you're part of it, what we're doing in February as well. We'll definitely talk more about that later. Thank you. Thomas, what say you, my friend? Yes, thanks, Greg. Honey, thanks so much for sharing that. That's a, it's really been inspiring to hear. Um, and, and when you talk purpose, you know, one of the things that I really realigned with myself on this year was, was my purpose. And what came up bold and strong was community. Mm. Community is my purpose. And, and I'm going to take you back to where everything started for me. I grew up in a uh, small town right outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania called Phoenixville. Those of you familiar with the Northeast there. Uh, my mother was a school teacher. Uh, my father was a community organizer and ran the, uh, the local television station. And my whole journey was understanding our community, understanding from playing sports and wanted to be highlighted as player of the week from the, from the local television station and, and really just understanding the impact that we've had um, through education. So I inherited this great love for community through my parents. And being in a small town, we had a chance to know everyone in our community, right? From yeah. uh, the faith-based community to the local YMCAs, to the school, um, to uh, soccer leagues and different uh, baseball practices. Um, we had a chance to really be part of it. And that was instilled in me. So when I left uh, Pennsylvania, I came to South Florida for an opportunity to work with schools and districts and help them in the area of mathematics. That birthed in me the passion for training, learning and development, right? Working with superintendents, working with individual schools, principals, uh, teachers, and pushing in and even doing classroom demonstrations with, with students. Mm. That really ignited a fire in myself of the impact we can make, right? Yeah. It wasn't until, and I love how Hani broke this down, it wasn't until I had some brokenness in my life, that's when I really had to take a step back and say, Am I going to live for myself, Thomas Ramsey, or am I going to live for my purpose? And it, it, and it wasn't until after my mother passed and really getting an understanding of her legacy that she left in education and left on people and left on community that I said, I need to dust myself off, pick myself up and be a instrument to go back into our communities, to provide these learning services and really love on one another. And so that's where I'm really energized with the team here at Interworks because we're elevating the human experience at work. So now I get a chance to go into our business communities. I travel all in North America, but we service clients internationally. So now we have extended our community and now we're in, including back in education, uh, just left a call with Miami-Dade County Public Schools, the fourth largest school district in America, and mm. now getting able to serve our communities um, from the leadership perspective all the way down to the students. And the other thing I'm excited about, Greg and, and Hani, is about being able to serve our law enforcement leadership. Yeah. That's another area that's really brought out a passion because you have men and women fighting on the front lines. We want to give them more support and more tools. And boy, this is what it's about for me. Um, and so when I show up, I show up with community. Well, you both are both are bold and beautiful. And I appreciate what you just said, uh, Thomas. I've, I've always enjoyed our conversations. You always come across so true and human and, and humble. And, and I will share with both of you, as, as some of the listeners know already, I, I too was, was broken. I didn't realize how broken I was all along relative to being not humble but it was 18,000 feet up the mountain in Aconcagua where I realized I had my head so far in my arse I couldn't hear or see the best self than I, than I didn't even know was there. So I, I came down and created what I thought was a purpose and you know me not being the fastest learner in the world, it took me a while, but from all that came two boys, Brooks and Jackson, and to them, that's all I'm about is our, we call ourselves the Aiden boys, that's our little community, but it's all about purpose. Is all about trying to get better as 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 young men and, and boys and and here we go. But 
You mentioned leadership, Thomas, and I'm going to start with you. I'd like for you to expand on what leadership means to you, and I'd also like to hear your two cents about what do you believe the world needs now relative to leadership? Yes, Greg, thank you so much for that. Um, when, when I think of leadership, I think of helping someone achieve goals, visions, and dreams that they couldn't do by themselves. Hmm. Leadership is about serving and lending the help and support. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations. And when you are hooked up with a leader, whether mm -hmm. in your organization, whether through a mentor coach, they're going to give you that extra supply of resource, whether yeah. it be just strength and encouragement, whether it be financial, it's helping people reach goals that they couldn't reach by themselves. Yeah. And when we need right now is leaders that will lead other people in the community. Mm. I can't lead. And you said it beautifully, Greg, if I'm just focused on myself, what we need is a group of leaders that are looking beyond their own nose yeah. so that we can get strengthen our neighbor. Yeah. We can strengthen our business partner. We can strengthen the rest of our community. If I'm a leader in a business community, I can now impact and have an influence on what we're doing in public school education because now I'm looking and directing in their direction. And that's really what we need right now is to understand the position that we're in, understand the condition of our community and bridge the gap by helping other people get to their highest level and their highest goals. And I, I can't help but what just waiting to say this, in my opinion, teachers as parents are as well, but teachers are the most important leaders we have out there because they get to, in addition to the parents, they get to suggest and serve and mold and recommend and, and coach and teach. And I, I can't imagine what is more important now so they can, these little men and women can grow up with the belief that they can do it too. Just love what you guys are doing at AterraWorks to really serve the, the educational community. And God bless you for doing that. Honey, honey what's, what are your thoughts about leadership? And uh, same question I asked Thomas, what do you believe the world needs now in that area? Yeah, you know, I think yeah, I want to really almost pick up where you what you just mentioned this analogy with parenting and teachers leadership, we all are in some capacity or another in leadership. So when I think of what really ties it together, regardless if you lead a team, if you're a parent of kids, if you if you are leading a church group, whatever the, the case may be, is in all cases. I think good leadership helps you define first and foremost, like what's the mission here? What are we after? Uh, in, in the office world, that's so easy to define as a, you know, as a parent to a child, like what is my mission really with, with a, allowing you and helping you to grow up, to be yeah. um, an independent human being that, that is, feels mm -hmm. secure and confident in themselves. Um, in all instances, regardless if it's the office or if it's the home life, you want to create and instill some values values that we all collectively can feel good about being in the same community and, and, and growing up in that. We also want to set some boundaries yeah. in some ways, you know, like you, you got to set the guardrails in the company or as a parent at home. But I think such a big part is to allow, if it's now team members or if it's your child for his or her creativity to come out for yeah. there to be room for exploration. Um, yes, you got to keep the kids accountable. And actually, as I was thinking about like what the world needs right now, uh, we are fortunate here to have um, a, a quite known a pastor in our community on, with Andy Stanley. And he was just sharing how his dad helped him really grow up. And so his dad asked more questions than he gave yeah. answers. Andy would come all the time with the idea that, you know, dad, what should I do? And he's like, well, what do you think you should do? Um, so there is a sense of helping each individual shape their own world, yeah. um, but also keeping them accountable. He was telling a story about him having a speeding ticket when he was super young, quite early in his driving career. And then he would come home to dad and he's like, I got a speeding ticket. And dad is like, well, that's unfortunate. How are you going to pay for that? 
And so I think there is this, how can we help um, team members to really fully shine and how can we help our children grow up to be um, responsible human beings that just really think for themselves and flourish in their own ways? Well, you, you brought up uh, questions and being curious and, and asking them instead of answering everything. And, and a, a, big, a big part of what I do with, with organizations is I believe in, in supporting them, yes, as a leader, but really elevating. Everything f for me is around elevating the people around me. And as a client, the only way I can do that is ask them, what is it you want to do and what are you willing to do to get there? I was on a podcast called Shoot Talks the other day. We were talking about what I do and how I do it, and it really came down to asking questions and asking them exactly what they want to do. Then as a coach or as a leader or a teacher, then we hold them accountable to what they said they wanted to do, not what, to, to Thomas's point earlier, leaders, it's not about you. It's about the people that are following you. Teachers, it's not about you. It's about the kids in your class and parents. I've said it on this show many times. It's get over yourself. You're but if I may, John, yeah, like it's a, it's a mentality shift. It's literally, I think we've come from a generation where um, everybody had to prove themselves and show right. up as a leader. And now these leaders who have done exactly what they were asked to do by their previous generation have taught our kids. So there is this real shift of, of how do we show up? We know that there needs to be more heart and love in our, in our way that we lead people. Uh, it, just, it just needs that molding still. Well, we're, we're on the backside of uh, Martin Luther King's celebration, and let's be honest, he was one of the best leaders this world will ever know, and he was focused on love and character and dreams and getting along, and it, regardless of where you're from and who you are, why can't we all just get together and get along? And, and in my opinion, leaders, you've got to have the dream of what tomorrow could look like in your heart as you lead other people. And it, again, it's not about what happened yesterday. It's about what is possible for tomorrow. Last I looked, I cannot do anything about Sunday or Monday. It's in the rearview mirror. Today is Tuesday. And what am I going to do to be the best version of myself and all those around me? So uh, I'm going to shift from, from leadership, honey, to servant leadership, something that I subscribe to and I'm, I'm building my, my whole coaching career around. When I say servant leadership, what, what resonates with you and what do you believe it means to you? When I think of servant leadership, the first idea that pops to mind for me is having the right people in the right seats. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm literally just finished an interview process and just hired someone. And I had mm. so many amazing candidates uh, with so much experience. Uh, and at the end, I show someone who geeks out on exactly what I needed, which is administrative project work and analytics. And I had some amazing people that were creatives that, oh my God, I am, I'll, I'll do my best to make sure that I stay connected with them, that when the opportunity is right, to, sure. to put them in the right seat. But for me, as a, as a servant leader, I feel like I'm responsible that the people that are on my team absolutely love what they do. And I give them for the most part, the kind of work that they thrive on. And then the other thing, I, you know, I, I probably would come back on, the, it, it's so hard, this, this, this concept of asking more questions than giving answers. And I find it in my own life. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's easy for us to talk about it. It's another thing for me really to translate that into my day-to-day -day life, um, to, to be a coach, to not just a health coach, but to, to be a coach to the team members around me. Um, and it's a muscle to train. It feels like, you know, it takes more time. Um, but every time I do it, it's like it feels so rewarding to yeah. see the impact it has. And so I guess those would be two thoughts that I would have on that topic. And I'm going to ask you to just think about this question. How about if we stop leading and start serving? How about if we just show up with a passion and a dedication to the human being in front of us that you absolutely want to serve him or her? And oh, by the way, I'm a leader. I want to serve you, and oh, by the way, I'm your boss. I want to serve you, oh, by the way, I'm a see this or a see that. If we have a servant heart, leadership is so simple. So before I go any further, Mr. Ramsey, 
When you hear servant leader, and I know you are one, I've been around you long enough to know, what does servant leadership mean to you? And, and help us with some application today in, in the, what the world's going through. Yes, sir. So, you know, when, when you talk about servant leadership, um, the greatest among you will serve. And when you look at where we are, it's not just your title or the position you hold that makes you the leader because you can lead within an organization without the title. What do we need to have? We need to have humility. We need to have empathy and we need to have a listening ear to others. Those are the qualities of the attribute of really leadership because that's where servant comes in. You cannot lead if no one's ready to follow. If no one wants to follow you, you're not leading. You just hold a position and you're angry at everybody, right? And so this is where I've seen a lot of organizations where I can come into a room, I could come into a meeting and I'll be able to tell exactly who's leading this organization, right? Has nothing to do with title. Where we or where we're going to really blossom as a community is when the when the title meets up with the serving. Yeah. When we can help bridge the title to the serving, now we've blended and now we have true servant leadership. Okay. Yeah. And so this is really what it's about. It's about understanding, listening, right? Motivating and encouraging. I was dealing with a, a group of leaders, and one of the things that we talked about was. Uh, empathy that came yeah. up in our discussion last year. How do I have more empathy? Well, one of the things I, I challenged them at the end of the year was this, go and have dinner, go and shop, go and buy something in a community where people that don't look like you live. See, what happens to us is that we get so comfortable. All the lawyers want to hang with lawyers. All the doctors want to hang with doctors until we can cross mix up our community where you can see where everyone is, number one, you'll have more empathy. Number two, you'll have a better understanding of someone else's situation that don't look like you. So it's about, when we talk about bringing up a community, we need, we need servant leaders to bridge the gap, not just isolation and holding a title. That yeah. won't get it done. So I want to break through barriers. I want people to be real and understand that people do have some challenges other than you. Have you seen them? Mm-hmm. If you've seen them, you can identify with them, have a better listening ear, then we can grow together. Well, thank you, Thomas. You, you brought up a big word for me, and that's humility. One that I've struggled with early in my career because I was invincible. I was doing more than anyone and making lots of money, and the world was saying, Mr. Aiden, you're, you're pretty fantastic, but I had no idea what humility was. I couldn't spell the word empathy. I was curious, but I didn't really care, to be frank. And now I coach five principles, integrity, accountability, courage, passion, and humility. And I would tell you that what you're asking servant leaders to do is have the courage to go into a community that's not like them, not necessarily opposite, but just not like them. And then you brought up humility, and, and I believe humility and empathy are next-door neighbors. It, you take the time, have the heart to understand where the other person's coming from. Now, that takes time. To Hani's point earlier, it does take time, but when you do understand where the followers are coming from, then and only then can you lead. And I believe leadership is about making others, making more leaders and not so much about making more followers. But I appreciate your comments on that. Something special is happening. Thursday, February 4th, you've both been gracious enough to uh, participate. And when I asked you both, uh, would you participate in the Leadership Development Day on February 4th, uh, I'll start with you, Thomas. What was your first response, and why did you decide to participate? Yes. You know, my first response was purpose. Like, here it is. Again, aligning on purpose. When you shared with me your vision, what you wanted to accomplish, I said, wow, I had just finished my best year yet plan Mm -hmm. and I was clear on community. What better way to share the platform with leaders that are going to speak about leadership Mm -hmm. in a time such as this? So I was just blown away by the timing of it. I was blown away by the purpose and blown away for the opportunity to have a platform to share. Because if we can share, we can grow. Yeah. Amen. 
It's going to be a it's going to be a great platform, and you you bring a, a million dollar smile and a, just a huge heart, Thomas Ramsey. I so appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Very likewise. Very you're with us, Miss Berger. Honey, tell us when you first heard about it. Why the heck did you say yes, and it, what makes you excited to participate? I. I I think how can you not just I, mean, <laughs> I just met Thomas for the first time and just look at his energy and I, I'm just I'm excited about the caliber of speakers and the energy of speakers that you have brought together for this one day mm -hmm. um, I am just thrilled for myself already to learn so much but obviously and something that Thomas mentioned as well we all are passionate about a message and so I would love, and I'm so excited about being able to share what I've learned. I think we all, regardless if you're now in a, uh, in a work environment, if you're a parent, whatever your role is, we all somehow seek to be confident, confident in our decisions that we make, confident um, in our environment. We, there is so much chatter going on in our minds about, did I do that right? Mm. Uh, what is she thinking? What did he say? What did he mean by that? Should I be doing that or not? And I've learned over the last few years that this voice that we all have in our head that makes us question everything and ourselves and others is really detrimental for us to um, find fulfillment and joy and peace in our lives. So my mm. goal is really in that time that I have uh, with everyone who's going to join is to show you how to silence that doubting voice in your head so you can start listening to your heart mm -hmm. and you can start following your heart and your intuition really just go full force forward so 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 stoked about it uh thank you for for joining us uh honey Berger and thomas ramsey with honey with jovial and thomas ramsey with intera works We'll see you on the next episode of your Servant Leadership Podcast. And again, this is Greg Aiden saying thank you very much.